Alright guys, welcome to take 3 of uh, this review. Take 3 is not my fault. Second take was because I got a Stranglers lyric mixed up and made myself look like a tit, which what's new at the end of the day. And then the second time, which I actually said while I was recording the video that I had a feeling that I'd get a phone call. And I did, halfway through recording it. And uh, as you can see, got my... Uh, beer label collage up there but um it's such like a weird shape and size much like my, sh my shelf well yeah my shelf's quite long uh it's such like weird shape and size like myself that it, i don't know it, it looks good where it is but i'm still trying to find a good angle and a good way to utilize it i don't know it's no big deal it just it looks nice it doesn't look good on camera because you've got glare on it and the video's a little bit patchy um, but yeah, anyway, who cares? Uh, so today we've got something that could be potentially really special. Um, it's definitely intriguing for me, and um, as you can tell by the title and the thumbnail, we've got some Swedish craft beer, in a can no less, for 69p. Picked this up in Home and Bargains, um, because I was just having a look around. Picked myself up a, a, a cheap power bank, because... Whenever I take my phone out and I've got either MuseCon or I'm doing a vlog, I end up like going home on like 2% battery. So I'm like, oh, I can't record anymore. I can't listen to any more music because I'm going to run out. It's like three quid. I don't expect it to be the greatest gadget in the world, but hopefully it can at least give me a couple of hours extra battery each time I use it when I'm out and stuff. So it's always handy for a vlog. Maybe I need to get myself a cheap little tripod as well. Yeah, I'm going to do that next time. Anyway, we're not here to talk about that, we're here to talk about beer, and yeah, pick this up in Home of Bargains, which has got a really good range of beers, actually, and uh, they're doing some awesome, um, like, gift pack sort of things, because it's coming up to Christmas as I'm recording this one. You know, sort of like um, the Witchwood beers, where you get two different Witchwood beers, then like a packet of pork scratchings, and it's got like a nice little box with a with straw and that sort of thing for like two, three quid, where it's like, it's cheaper to actually buy that than to buy the two bottles of Witchwood on the shelf or whatever ones they've got and um yeah I picked up a Guinness one with a Guinness original and you get like a little stein with it. Dick idea thought the stein was actually printed on the glass but then I realised boom it's just the label of the beer but it's nice to have another glass. And they've got a Carlsberg one litre stein. I mean you get the one litre Carlsberg export which I might pick up because I still need to review that for the channel. And it was like four quid, so, you know, to pay four quid for a litre stein is great. So if you've got a home and bargains near you, um, if it's in your part of the UK, not sure if it's like a regional thing or if, you know, it's like, oh, it's in the northwest and like the southeast, you know, one of those sorts of deals. But give them a look and go to your local bargain shops like B&M Bargains and, you know, those sort of discount shops because you can get some proper intriguing beer stuff and little gift sets. Which, you know, it's always great for potential presents or, you know, for yourself. But, um, yeah, anyway, waffed on for way too long. So we're going over to, and I hope this is the actual right brewery name, uh, the Backyard Brew, or a Backyard Brew, launched from the Backyard Brewery in Falkenberg in Sweden. And a big shout out to my good friend James over at Rampant My Beer Reviews, even though he's in the UK now. Uh, he spent a hell of a lot of time in Sweden. I was lucky enough to meet up with him while I was in Germany. That was a really great day. It would have been good if we, could, if I could have organised it better on my part. So I could have met up with him in Munich or something and had a good beery day out. But um, yeah, him and his cousin came down to Regensburg, met him, took him around the city. And unfortunately, Beretta wasn't open. Would have been nice to have taken him there. But yeah, we had a, a damn good time. And hopefully I can do that a lot more over the coming year. So yeah. Big shout out to James for this one. Um, and yeah, so this is the B17, a hop struck Pilsner, clocking in at 4.7. And, uh, you know, for a can that's only 69p, you at least get the ingredients list on the back. So the brewer is apparently Daniel. Hi, Daniel. Uh, if you're watching this, uh, the style is a dry hopped Pilsner. The malts are Pilsner malts and caramel malts. And the beer is dry hopped with Sars and Willamette. IBU counts 53. 
Uh, original gravity is 11,3 and EBC is 60. Not too sure what that means. If any of my homebrew friends can uh, tell that, if you can actually read that. Because the camera quality is not really that good for some reason today. And uh, yeah, I've got to read the... Um, Ingredient uh, the taste and notes, but apparently it's ideal with fish, meat, sausage, veggie, anything really. So you can have it with your more pungent cheeses like gargonzola, baby. That was a terrible impression um, of you know who. But the rolled, baby. Anyway, enough of that because I'm making a big fucking wally of myself in this review. But yeah, fantastic looking can. Uh, just about saved it. Fantastic looking can, fridge of 30 mils, 69p, dry hop lager, let's give it a go. I'm not expected to be blown away, but I would happily be blown away with this one. And of course it's a little bit shaken up, so it's uh, cream pied all over my hand. Oh, it's got a big smell coming off it. And it's, look at that. I haven't seen anything like that since Pornhub. So, uh, let's pour it into the glass and see what we get. Um, I read on the back that I think this is, um, it's either owned by Carlsberg, Sweden, or just the Swedish branch of Carlsberg have the distribution rights, or if they own a uh, backyard brewery. I'm sure I've heard of the brewery before, but I cannot commit to that notion, so, uh, if anybody's got any information that isn't already going to be put in the description box, feel free to educate me. That's what it's all about. So beer in a glass then. And uh, yeah, lovely sort of ambery golden colour. It's a little bit darker than your regular sort of pilsner. Uh, in fact, it's considerably dark. I'm usually used to that sort of like lighty yellow, um, like urine sort of look uh, that pilsners have. They have lovely copper hues, nice clarity. There might be a little couple of bits and bobs in there, but it might just be the carbonation, which is nice and steady. And going up to that just shy of two fingers worth of a maybe slightly off-white head. But um, yeah, it looks to me more like a traditional German Heller's beer, which I am missing that style quite a bit. Anyway, let's see what we get on the aroma. Big hits of citrus in there. Lovely sweetness coming out of it, like a syrup-like sweetness. It's got that musky, malty tone to it as well. A little bit of like a herbaceous edge, spicy hop character, which I guess is coming from that sauce. But yeah, it's got this sort of like sh very subtle sherbet lemon sort of character to it. But to me, it's like a really nice and sweet... Uh, Pilsner, lager type deal. You definitely get that caramel malt coming through. And it's blending nicely with that citrus character. Not one of them is overpowering. And um, I mean, you've heard me talk about hoppy lagers and craft lagers and craft pilsners and that sort of thing. When they just abuse it with hops, you've not got the body to back up that. So it just ends up being like a somewhat tasty, hoppy pissy pale ale at the end of the day i like a good lager there's nothing wrong with just brewing a high quality pills and a lager you can still call it craft because you're a craft brewery you've brewed it in a craft way i suppose but just because it's called a craft or a hoppy lager or a pilsner i mean yeah if you call it a hoppy lager or a pilsner I, i'm going to be a little bit more um <clears throat> open to that because it's actually got hoppy in there but um yeah, I mean, it does say the hop struck Pilsner and is dry hopped with hops. So I'm expecting uh, it to deviate slightly. But from the aroma, it seems to be like a good, honest Pilsner. Anyway, let's give it a taste. Cheers, guys. starts off really promising it really really does you get this sort of like it starts off really bold and slightly earthy but then that lovely 
gentle citrusy hops character comes through. But then that just disappears quite quickly. And then what you're left with is sort of like um like lowbrow, almost like <sighs> slightly low quality Eastern European lager pills in the territory. Finishes a little bit watery as well. It tastes a bit more bitter than um, 33, did I say? Yeah, 33. It's got a noticeable bitterness to it. Slight metallic edge to it. You get that ever so slight corn syrup sensation as well. That being said, it's not bad. Um, you know, it's, it's not going to blow your mind or anything like that. But at the same time, I've tasted much, much worse. And I've paid a little bit more for that experience. There are some like sort of off flavours in there though. It has to be said. Daniel, what have you done here, mate? It's it's got that sort of like Carlsberg acquisition feel to it. That's such a fucking bullshit thing to say. Disregard that. Yeah, that's what these fucking people who just shit on uh, macro beers say in it. Oh, it's it's got it's okay, but it's got that. You you can tell that it's Carlsberg. It's like, oh, fuck off. See, now that it's all in there, those off flavours have subsided. Maybe now that it's aerated a little bit in the glass, that's helped it. I do think, I mean, this isn't exactly the most chilled that it is because I didn't really want to do that and I was impatient because I was in the mood for a drink. So it's only been in the fridge for about 20 minutes to half an hour. It's got a little bit of a chill to it. But you would enjoy this a lot more. Um, when it's been in the fridge for a day or whatever, for a few hours at least. But yeah, it's just a little bit thin. Slight off flavours in there. But for 69p, you can do much worse. You can do much worse even with the the more highly regarded craft lagers. I mean, I think I'd rather have this than like a, a, a lager that's been absolutely abused with hops and you're paying like craft pale ale IPA sort of prices. Do you know what I mean? But this, it's not bad. It's not bad. It's worth a go if you see it, especially for that price. And if you have tried it, let me know your thoughts, opinions on it. And if you've tried anything else from these guys, recommendations are always welcome. So in terms of a rating then, I'm going to give this a, a somewhat solid, above average, <coughs> excuse me, 6 out of 10. I don't think I would buy it again, uh, even though it is only 69p. I'm getting like that sort of like maize crisp sort of flavour now in my mouth. Yeah, it, it, it's it's okay. It's okay. Um but I could see people shitting on this. Um, and at the same time, I could see people actually really being quite partial to this one as well. So, you know, if you wanted a cheap little night, get yourself four, six cans of this. You know, you're only paying like three quid for that. No, more than three quid, 69 times four. No, no, it's near, near to four quid. But if you spent two pound more, you could get yourself a four pack of... Um, Punk IPA or uh, Elvis Juice. Which I did today. So I'm looking forward to drinking that. But um, it's going to go over a lot of foods. Another 15 minute review. I do apologise. And I apologise for... I did like a little bit... Like, uh, a very un-PC gesture with my hand before. And uh, use the F word. So I do apologise about that to anybody who um, is uh, sensitive enough to be offended. 
who may be watching this review. And uh, Daniel, um, I apologise um, that I might have potentially misrepresented your beer that you've made. I'm definitely interested in the brewery. First and foremost, I want to try more of their beers. But I don't think I'd rush out to try this one again. So I'm going to stop it here. Sound a little bit like... What's his name? From Planet Earth. And Blue Planet doesn't sound anything like him. I've made a complete twat of myself in this video. I'm going to end it there. If you've tried this beer, let me know your thoughts and opinions. Richard Attenborough. No, David Attenborough. Richard Attenborough is his brother. Let me know your thoughts and opinions about the brewery or the beer. Recommendations welcome. Check out my Swedish beer playlist. Check out my Pilsner playlist. And more importantly, I hope you'll join me next time for another review. Now I'm getting obscenely posh, so I must go. Chin chin.